Hey everyone, Cranshark here with Crashworks 3D. Today I thought I'd take a quick moment and show you some pro tips when you're motorizing your helmet. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, as you can see, I've got the Mark 39 helmet here by Walsh and I've actually already motorized this. What I've done is I've uh, taken some of the pieces apart, the servo arms, just to show you some pretty specific things on what I do when I go to motorize a helmet. If you want more full comprehensive videos on motorizing a helmet, I suggest taking a look at Frankly Built's videos on YouTube. He's got a ton of them, so I don't want to redo what's already been done by somebody else. I'm just going to highlight a couple of little things that I do that uh, makes motorizing the helmet a little easier. The first thing you'll notice is I've got a servo horn already on my servos. I, don't, I haven't actually connected my servo arms. They are in here all connected to the faceplate. I've also already connected the helper arms. You can see that here. So the reason that servo horn is there is the first thing I do is I home the servos. When you first turn on one of the Crashworks board or if you're using the Crashworks code on your own board, it will move to the closed position when you first power it on. So I've got the board all hooked up here. This is the AM6 and uh, connected with Penelope for anybody that has a smart battery pack. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I've got a nice little power switch here that I like to use, so I'm just gonna power it on and you're gonna watch the servo arm, or servo horn, move, because we don't know what the servo position was in when it first fired up. So now you can see it moved to the home position, and I can attach the servo arms now. All right, so now we're looking at the faceplate. It's in the closed position. I already took off that servo horn. I don't need that anymore. I've disconnected my servos and powered off the board so nothing funky happens while I'm doing this. And I'm going to just line up the servo arms and attach them. And you can see, there we go. Don't, uh, don't be too forceful when you're doing this. But just get them nice and attached. You can see everything's all lined up. Now I'm going to show you the trick to getting those screws in, even though the faceplate is already closed. Now that I have the servo arms attached, what I'm going to do is rotate the helmet on the side and I'm going to gently open the faceplate just enough so that I can get to the uh, screw holes. Let's see if we can line this up for the camera so you can see it too. Um, and so what's going to happen is the servo is going to, they're going to rotate a little bit but because you've got them in the servo arms they should hold their position and I'm going to take you know one of these tiny little screws and one of my screwdrivers and screw that back in. If that doesn't stick, here's a little trick, I will take a magnet so that it doesn't drop in there and line that guy up and just start putting the screw in. just like so. And then I'll flip it over and do the other side. So we get the servo arms all screwed in and we're ready to test this out. It's not a bad idea to just gently open and close it, make sure everything's clear still. I got everything hooked up back into the board, plugged in servo one, servo two, make sure that's all correct. I'm gonna power it on real quick.
give it a minute to initialize. And there you go, lights come on. Hit the switch, open, close, and there you have it. So if you run into issues, we can talk about uh, troubleshooting next. All right, so a couple of things that you can look for when you're troubleshooting is if your faceplate kind of opens up and it's wobbly or, you know, kind of twists, check your helper arms, make sure they're aligned properly, make the, or sure they're installed properly, uh, and they've got just the right amount of tension on them uh, so that they open and close but don't bind. Another issue that we commonly see is the faceplate, especially on these Walsh. So if you notice, this whole top piece comes off. The faceplate will snag on that from time to time. So you can see right there, it's, it's kind of caught on that. Just free it up from it and just make sure it moves smoothly. Sometimes you may have to slide the upper dome back a little bit, but usually it a lot of the times the problems that you run into is when the uh, faceplate is binding with the dome itself. Another thing to be aware of is by design, we disable the servo motors. If they stay on, it's going to try and hold the faceplate up there and it's going to heat up, it's going to drain your battery, your head's going to get hot. We don't want anybody getting hurt, so by design, we intentionally disable those. Common thing is if you don't have good articulation, watch how it just kind of like naturally falls down on its own. Okay, we get that a lot. People will be like, hey, the faceplate just falls down on its own. What you want to do is you want to make sure you've got full a full sweep back and articulation. Look how far back that is. If your faceplate isn't sweeping that far back or further, it is going to droop down. Just like so. So that's something to look for. And before you go monkeying with the code and changing servo angles and all that, just check your articulation. Same thing if it's not closing all the way. So like couple of people are like oh it's only closing this distance it's probably because you missed that earlier step that I showed where we home the servos before we install the faceplate uh, another common thing you can see I don't have it perfectly sealed up there okay I'm not really going into space so it doesn't need to be a perfect seal so that I can hook it up to an internal air system or whatever if you're going for that kind of perfection, just keep working on tweaking it, keep on um, working on a good fit, stuff like that. But for a con, people are gonna be so blown away by the overall cosplay costume, they're not even gonna notice that kind of stuff. Uh, the other thing too, you're probably gonna find out pretty quickly if you're wearing this at a con, you're gonna get pretty warm inside the helmet anyway. Uh, you're probably gonna have the faceplate open more of the time than not. Another trick, okay, so let's say that you do have full articulation, but it's still dropping down. I have had not had to do this yet to any of my helmets, so I haven't done it myself. But if anybody out there has done this, where they've modified either putting magnets up around the widow's peak, as you can see where the, the servo arms are making contact with the dome itself, people have put magnets back there and had a magnetic connection. People have also done elastic bands to hold that up. I, I haven't done either. Usually my go-to is making sure the arms have just the right amount of tension and I've got the full articulation. But if anybody out there has done those things and wants to make a short video or share with us how you did it, that'd be awesome. So that's really, all I can think of right now for troubleshooting. If you guys have other things that you've run into that you need help troubleshooting, feel free to reach out to us either through the comments below or on Frankly Built's Discord. But yeah, hope this was helpful. Good luck.